All right. Can everyone hear me? If you can hear me well, say yes or show me thumbs up. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I really love this, you know, good vibes. And I am so, so, so happy to be back on a stage and to be able to see everyone in here gathering in this beautiful city, Alicante. So thank you so much for gathering in here and decided to watch my talk. But before I forget to say, um, I want to take this opportunity to tell the huge thank you to amazing React Alicante conference team for organizing such an amazing and awesome conference. So let's give them a huge applause. <laughs> All right, so as I am probably too excited, <laughs> um, before I forget to say what I want to share with you, um, yeah, let's jump in to my talk. So I'm not just here to tell you how I'm excited and you know, like <laughs> how I really love this beautiful city, Alicante. No, I'm here for you to share and also show with you how you can remix your UI and UX to another level with headless content manage, uh, headless CMS. So my name is Arisa Kzaki. You can call me Arisa. Uh, from my name, probably some of you could guess. Yes, I am from Japan, but five years ago, I moved to um, South Germany. So I'm working from there. Um, at work, I work as a developer relations engineer at Storyblock. Yes, you see us over there or over there behind in a booth. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you actually like what what do we do like more in depth. So let's skip for a moment because it's an intro about who I am. So besides from my work, um, I do an ambassador at Girl Code. So Girl Code is an organization based in the UK to empower women to change their careers, um, to, you know, jump into the tech industry and also to become developers. Also, I am in GDE, Maze Google Developer Expert in Web Technologies. Enough about me, because I don't want to take too much um, long time in an intro, because first of all, I only have 40 minutes. I tend to speak a lot, so <laughs> remind me if I go like beyond. Anyway, but let's get to the point. So like I said before, I promised you to show you how you can, you know, like um, improve a lot to bring your UI and UX to another level with headless content management system. So here's the first sentence that I wanted to probably start to tell you. So UI and UX are everywhere. That's not something that only, you know, like you see these things in the tech, tech world. Actually, like you see that and you experience that in everyday your life. Um, for example, like come in my way to get to this venue. I took the metro. Uh, the way I purchased the ticket, the interface that I had to see from the machine, that's UI. Yes, I was able to change the languages and I was able to purchase the ticket. So it means they provide a good UI, I think. And the way to get to here, to get into the metro was quite straightforward. So it means I had a good user experience so far. So like this, you experience and also see UI and UX in every day in your life. And the other thing that I wanted to um, tell you, and I also want you to pay attention in here, is that um, these UI and UX will, you know, like make you feel happy if it's really good. And at the same time, it could lead you to feel like very sad or even very, very angry. So it means that UI and UX is in a very entry point to, you know, like make your users or customers, content editors, to feel like emotional, you know, stories. And to give you a little bit more better idea, I will always like to share something like, you know, um, more interesting story and then get into the demo. So don't worry about it. I will get to the point to show you the demo. But before going to that, I want you to imagine how it could lead to, you know, like provide what kind of experience to your users. So here's the thing, um, a true story um, lost in an island because of the bad UI and UX. It's not going to be horror because I cannot watch horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, so a couple of months ago, around this April, my boyfriend and I, we decided to, you know, travel nice, beautiful, you know, uh, Swedish countryside. Um, and in the end of our vacation, on the last day, we decided to, you know, discover, you know, like nice islands to take beautiful photos. So on that day, we had a plan to discover two to three islands because all of them are like gathered in a quite close distance. So we just simply were able to take a ship. Uh, you know, if we, you know, if, if we are able to, you know, take the, uh, take the next, you know, ride, then it shouldn't be no problem to discover two to three islands in a day. So we took the ship and here's the first place where we got off our ship. So far, we were able to find a place where it looks like a port and also the place where we probably could find a timetable. And it's not too difficult. And here's the timetable. I would say like even if we both had no clue what it was written because it's written in all in Swedish. To find the next, you know, like timetable to get on a ship shouldn't be too difficult because I mean, to find a timetable, I think everywhere in the world is written in the same format numbers. So, okay, we decided to take the next uh, next ride around 246, the place where I highlighted in here. So from now on, we probably have like more than an hour to discover an island. And this island is relatively small. So we even enjoy like, you know, to take the photos, took some walk, even chilled. And we both are really, really, you know, kind of the type of the people want to be extra prepared. So we even set the alarm on our phones to be back in a port uh, 15 minutes in advance. So we saw the ship was approaching to us. Okay, good, we can take the next ride. But look what had happened. The ship just like left in front of us. I mean, I saw them approaching me. I saw them right in front of me, but they didn't stop it at all. They were just like, bye bye. So I was like, I mean, seriously, we were waiting in there for 15 minutes in advance and they saw us. They saw us, but they just left us. What's going on? Right? So at this point, although I was really, really panicked, I realized that there must be something in very important inf information we have missed. So let's go back to the timetable and here is what I found. So for some reason, if you had paid very, very close attention to this tiny capital T right next to the timetable where we supposed to take the next ride, and for another some reason, <laughs> if you had a good guess that you had to wonder what this capital T stands for, then that is the information that I probably had to use the Google Translate a bit earlier, but yeah, it's too late. So here's the thing. You had to give a call if you want to take a ride no later than 30 minutes before of the departure. I mean, seriously, it's not a cab, it's not a taxi. I mean, I want to know, like, in every conference that I give a talk with this topic, I want to know how many of you could guess that you had to give a call no later than 30 minutes of your ride. <laughs> I want to see. Average, like, I see, like, one or two hands, but I see, like, more than two hands in here. Okay, okay, then maybe, like, you're more expert than me, but, but, let me say but. For me, it is not normal. And yeah, I couldn't guess that, that I had to take, you know, that I had to give a call anyway. So, but we don't have time to depress, right? Because we need to go back to the main island. Now we have another mission, which is more serious that um, preventing, you know, for not letting us to stay overnight in this, you know, island. So we saw the next timetable, uh, which is quite like, uh, yeah, depressing <laughs> because means that we have entire three hours with just empty summer, summer houses and no human beings and no place to go and no place to eat, nowhere to go to the bathroom. So of course I'm not happy. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I plan to discover like two to three islands, you know, to take beautiful photos, to have nice feeling to end my, you know, last day of vacation. But no, I need to spend entire three hours without being able to do anything at all. 
and of course, this is literally my mind inside. I thought I seriously, I seriously considered about to swim back because I, there's no way that I want to spend my three entire hours in this island uh, where you can find nothing. I mean, it's not like I wasn't able to go back to the main island. Yes, we were able to go back to the main island, but it was already like evening, so there's not much things to do. So we ended up for not being able to do like anything at all, but just got stuck in an island. So my whole journey was like, in the end, I was able to go back to the main island. I didn't have to call something to rescue us, but my entire journey, you know, to be able to complete my, you know, last day of vacation was like completely, you know, ruined. So I was very, very unhappy. So let's go back to like what we were talking in the beginning. What I shared with you in this, you know, lost in an island because of the bad UI and UX story um, will tell you this. Well, if I had a great UI and UX on the timetable, probably today on this stage, maybe I was sharing with you that I really had such an amazing vacation. So you all should go there. But I mean, like, it didn't work in that way. I had a very UI and UX in there. Um, my experience on that, um, in the journey over there was like not nice. So from here, you can tell that, okay, the experience that you, your users will get will matter a lot and they feel or they will have like emotional stories. So let's transition, you know, like this story into tech and more precisely your favorite technologies you like to use. I'm pretty sure like everyone in this room, um, you know, like have your favorite technologies um, that you want to use every day. So here's my example. My favorite tech stacks are Remix and Storybook, and we are going to see why. And first, let's start from the Remix. So Remix is a framework um, that is considered, that is very fast and super resilient. And to give you how, you know, like fast and resilient, I'm going to show you more of the approaches and the features that they have, but to give you a quick overview why I'm saying that and why I chose Remix, I'm not doing anything complicated in here, but I just wanted to show you how they're really fast in general. So I'm more used to, you know, like um, in here, I'm doing only, you know, like running the local host to start to working on my project, but I'm more used to, you know, like, kind of the background that I'm waiting for a couple of even minutes <laughs> to, you know, get, get up from the seat, go into the kitchen, make a coffee and go back and then, oh, okay, finally it's ready. Then I can start to work. But Remix doesn't give you that time. Um, look at this. It's been built in under 600 milliseconds. And we are going to see more what kind of very, very helpful and really useful features Remix has already provided for us. Next up, I chose Storybook as a headless CMS. And I know, I know, a couple of you might think, that, oh, come on, you work at Storybook, so that's why you say that. No, <laughs> I would say no, <laughs> because even if I wouldn't work at Storybook, I would have used Storybook for a pre pretty much like all the probably like projects that I use, because by choosing Storybook, it will, it will give me already like, you know, the post, um, I would say like you will be able to provide the real time visual editor to your users, content editors, um, from the moment, you know, the day one you, imp you, you, you use Storyblock so that I do not need to build such kind of feature from a scratch. And the second reason I chose Storyblock is because, well, by choosing Storyblock, not just me develop as a developer, but for my clients or the um, content editors, they also will be able to use the reusable component approach. So it means that Storyblock is based on the atomic design methodology, and then you can define only the necessary components that you want to have. And not just only to that, um, everyone uh, will be able to nest whatever kind of components to create different layouts with minimum amount of the components. So before I forget, <laughs> because I easily forget things, but to stick to the order <laughs> when I'm going to talk, um, I just wanted to give you a quick note that we have the tutorial 
um, based on Remix and a Storyblock. So if you're interested in to you know, test it out in your environment, here's the QR code that you can make a photo, then you will, over, you will be able to see the tutorial. And here's the demo. So this is what I'm going to show you today in the, in the rest of the talk today. So of course, as a developer or as developers, you always want to test it out and play in your environment, right? So to do that, here's another QR code and you should be able to see my GitHub repo. All right, so here's the fun part, demo. So let's get started. And to do so, first of all, I'm going to show you how you can create you know, the connection between Remix and a story block. Because, of course, by default, um, these two different technologies do not have the connections at all. So, but not to worry, we are going to enable that um, by following simple three steps. And then after that, I'm going to, you know, like um, improvise a little bit more to implement a um, more blog based um, structure over there. So, to get started, First of all, let's go from step one. Step one, as I promised you before, for not being complicated, you just need to execute these two simple uh, commands. One is to um, generate your brand new uh, Remix project. So it wouldn't take too long. You only need to wait for only a couple of few seconds. And then after that, um, you can install one single um, package that is actually provided from Storyblock side um, called Storyblock React. This is the React SDK. So um, not just only to be limited for using Remix project, but um, yeah, this is really um, good, so good source, I would say, um, in this demo. So step two, this is even easier step. I have already generated the magic link for you so that you do not need to watch carefully, you know, this video right now to follow step by step to define the necessary components and the schemas. Instead, I don't want you to, you know, like take this time, you know, for wasting your time so that um, by clicking this link or taking a photo of this QR code, you have everything ready. So all you're seeing, you know, like these components will be ready for you. Um, you can just focus on to implement the fun part only. We are already at the final step. And then after that, you will be able to complete to create the connection between Remix and the Storyblock. So here's the thing. After we installed our Storyblock React SDK, we are going to call two APIs that are coming from, again, this SDK. So the first one is called Storyblock init. And if we pay attention where we you know, call this Storyblock init, basically um, this API is telling Storyblock that, hey, I want to start to use the Storyblock API. So after that, following this story block in it, and there is the API plugin. So by calling this API plugin right here, you're going to tell again a story block that, hey, I want to start to use the story block API to retrieve the data. And that's it. I'm going to show you what we are going to use um, this components property later on because it's easier to understand by seeing the, you know, the source code. Oh, sorry, I skipped the one part. So <laughs> here, you can swap your token with the preview API key token that is provided from Storyblock side. All right, so we were able to create the connection between Remix and the sword block, and we have the most basic fundamental. Next up, we are going to create the logic to handle the dynamic components so that your content editors will be able to render you know, these dynamic components from the story blocks UI. And not only just to that, we are also going to enable the full feature of um, editable components. Means that, again, your content editors will be able to edit the contents um, whenever they want, and they can see the changes on the fly in real time. So to do that, we are going to call three APIs, again, that are coming from Storyblock React SDK. First one, we already know that, so why not to just skip it? Second one is called Storyblock Component. So Storyblock Component, by calling this API, um, you, you will have the full logic of, you know, conditionally, you know, like deciding to render if there are dynamic components. 
if there are not you know dynamic components there, you don't you do not need to render it, right? So you do not need to create such kind of logic on your end from a scratch. Means it's gonna be less code and it's more performant. Last API is called Story Block Editable. So this is an API to enable the full feature of the real-time editing experience. But instead of you know explaining you how it works and things like that, it's actually faster to see in code. So here is the example of the page template. So this component file is defining the page template that you can apply, you know, this one layout to multiple different pages. So if you have like 100 of the pages that you want to apply the same layout, all you need to do is just define this one component file and apply all, that's it. So as I said before, this, com this component file works as a template, right? And from the content editor's perspective, they also can see that information from the UI. So here is written the type of the component as content type. Means that this is the terminology from the story block. So I just want to be clear that this content type stands for the template. So that your content editors will be able to define, you know, the templates on their end from the UI. And there is the special field, field type called blocks. So this special, you know, like blocks field type will enable your content editors to nest whatever kind of components they want to define inside. So they do not do, so you do not need to, you know, like help them for 24 hours. They can do that by themselves. So to enable such kind of logic from this page template component file, as I said before, we are going to use the story block editable. So by wrapping the components that you want to make it to be real time, you know, editable, then the components that are going to be inside, in this case is the story block component. You're going to enable the rest of the dynamic components, whatever goes inside of this, you know, blocks field type to be editable. Means that you will be able to even change the orders of the components um, in regardless of what kind of, you know, nested levels they are. And there's one thing I want you to, you know, get your attention. So I already knew for some reason that I can map the rest of the dynamic components, but there's no such information so far, right? So here's the secret behind. So from the developer's perspective, because we want to take a look at how the data is structures, things like that, right? Instead of just the UI. So you can open up the one of the JSON files from the visual editor. Again, we importance the experience for everyone, regardless of the backgrounds of their professions. So for content editors, they also can stay on the visual editor. For developers, you also have everything you need on the visual editor. So here you can see the data path starts from the story. And the following, there is the content. And then after the content, there is the body. And this body was the name we gave for this special field type called blocks. So at this point, if you pay attention in this body, you see this body is an array object, right? That's why I knew that I could use the map to you know, render whatever kind of dynamic components goes inside. Because the rest of the components, for example, like teaser and more following grid features are stored um, you know, inside of this array object. We saw that a little bit higher um, scale of the co uh, component, but in here, I'm going to show you like the different variations of the component. So this is the nestable components, means that compared to the templates, you know, template components we defined before, um, these components are going to be nested inside of in somewhere different other components. So in here, we already saw how story block editable works, right? And inside of this teaser component, we have two field types. So we have a headline and we have the image. Of course, we want to, you know, enable the full feature of the real time visual editing experience for these two different field types. So that's why we, we wrap, you know, like these two different, you know, like field types as well. 
so that your users would be able to see when the text value has been, you know, like input inside of, you know, like this headline, they should be able to see the text that are being typed in real time. Uh, not to forget, there is the block prop. So as we saw before, <laughs> whenever I give a talk, maybe not whenever, but <laughs> There was a fire alarm going on one time, and today I also got another lag. Yay. <laughs> anyway, today I'm quite relaxed and calm, so I'm going to just continue. <laughs> so I hope everything is safe and not burning. But if something is burning, let me know. Then I will stop the talk. <laughs> All right, where was I? Um, yeah, here, 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 here was the place where I stopped. <laughs> so I was explaining what this block prop uh, stands for. Remember that we saw, you know, like in the draft JSON file that the data path starts from story, content, body, right? We do not want to repeat the same work. I think like it's in our nature to avoid creating the repetitive works. So that's why I stored all the beginning of the path into this block prop, and all I need to do is just grab the rest of the data path to render, you know, like in the end, these headline and the image. Quite long fire alert, right? <laughs> so we created and defined the two different types of the component files. And as a final touch, we are going to import these component files and you know like render it in the end so that your users will be able to see these components in the ui and to do that of course don't forget to import and um, here is the place where i was keeping you know the explanation up until this moment because it makes more sense to take a look at right now so now you understand why i store teaser and the page in here, because these are the dynamic components we just defined and created. So I just need to store the technical name and the component names. And that's it. So let's see in action, because of course we want to make sure that your users will be able to have a nice experience. So let's take a look at if we were able to, you know, like render all the components we have and the real time visual editing experience. So for content editors, they just need to select the components wherever they want to start to make the changes. So whenever they click the components, it will trigger the click event. Whenever they start to, you know, like input the text value, for example, then it will interact through iframe to communicate on the visual editor. So to change the orders of the components, very easy. You just need to click and drag and drop. And you also can save the current progress to share with other colleagues who do not ha have access to your Storyblock account. And also, if you want to publish the content on the fly, they also can do that. So congrats. Yay, we have the real-time visual editor. And yeah, your content editors will be able to see all the components are you know, rendered, and they can you know, add whatever kind of components they want to add. But I want to ask you one question. So far, we enable like two big features, right? But do you think we have the logic to render the dynamic routes at this point? Do you think? Yes or no? No, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> we don't have the logic yet. So here's the thing. We can provide two options to your content editors. And I want to pick one, which option you want to give or you want to offer to them. There is a huge clue from this scared emoji. Yes. <laughs> so I hope you get it. Option one, sorry, option A. Do you want to offer your content editors to create page files, even worse, from text editors? How many of you want to give this option to, the, to your content editors? I hope I don't see hands. No, thank you. No, because simply this is a seriously like scary experience for them. I mean, they don't want to imagine that they need to, first of all, use the text editors and open up like, I don't know, who knows, like gibberish to them, like written in a lot of codes. No, you don't want them to 
experience that. And first of all, they might mess up. We also don't want that. So move on to the next option. You see another emoji clue for you. <laughs> so option B, do you want to offer this option by allowing your content editors to you know, do all these you know, dynamic routes handling from the Storyblock UI? How many of you want to give these options to your users? Yes, I see the hands. Not everyone, but yes, that's the option we want to provide for them because they can do everything what I explained um, that I'm going to implement now um, available from the UI. So let's do that. And to enable the feature, Remix has already considered about that. and They already provide you this approach, splat routes. So splat routes works to catch all the dynamic routes, means lags, um, you know, that are going to be created from the UI. And this is not too complicated. And all you need to do is, first of all, need to create one single file in under the directory of the routes and give a name as just single dollar sign. That's it. And here's the source code as an example. I know, I know, you see a few lines of the code. And don't worry about it, because the only place where I want you to pay attention would be like four lines or four places. There would be like only like two APIs that are coming from Remix and two lines over there. So the first API, use loader data. This is an API, again, provided from the Remix side, so you do not need to, you know, like create your own API or the function in here. Instead, by using this use loader data, it will return the JSON parse data from loader function. So here's the loader function. And loader function is actually a backend API, again, from Remix, and it's already wired up through use loader data. So it means in the end, you just need to call, again, another API that is provided from Remix to end in here. So you do not, instead, you know, like if you do not use this JSON API coming from Remix, you need to, you know, define, first of all, like new response, and then there's going to be headers, yada, 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 and going to be like more than four lines of the code. That's not performant, in my opinion, but instead, we can just finish in white one-liner-ish code. And to handle the more in-depth part of handling, you know, the dynamic routes and catch all the slugs, here are the two lines that I want you to pay attention. And more precisely, I want you to pay attention to this special parameter called params. So that is, again, a parameter provided from Remix side. So if you log out this params parameter by using console.log and most importantly, use this array square brackets with the asterisk string value. And when you log this params parameter while you're, you know, like back and forth going to change different, you know, pages about home, contact, um, things like that, then it will log out all the slugs, all the dynamic routes um, in the log. And actually, that's it to handle, you know, and create the logic of the dynamic routes. So let's test it out by simple example. I'm not going to nest the routes at this point. Instead, I'm just going to create a contact page in the route. So here, after, you know, like deciding to create the new page, and giving the name as the contact, and your content editors can, all, can do all of it. And now, after filling out the content, you already have the contact page ready with the nice, beautiful, dynamic, uh, you know, route. And here is the more complicated example. Let's nest the route. So I'm going to create gallery forward slash my photo gallery, um, you know, dynamic route in there. And let's see how it goes. Usually, like, to handle this kind of, you know, logic. Um, if you need to do it without relying on anything at all, it's gonna be quite some work. But by using Remix flat routes, um, and also by, you know, like using the UI from the Storyblock side, your content editors can simply create a new folder together, you know, the rest of the relevant, you know, content pages in here like this. And now you have a nice, beautiful, my trip to Alicante, you know, gallery ready. So I hope by seeing my demo and hearing my story, I hope we all can kind of agree that 
you know, by saying that good UI and UX will give you very positive feeling. If you have like the smooth and nice and organized experience, I think everyone would be pretty much happy, right? You want to go home like after like 4 p.m., 5 p.m., right? You don't want to work 24 seven. And to conclude my talk, I want to, um, yeah, share with you like this last sentence in here. I uh, want to ask you one last question. So I think we all can agree again, like actually everyone can achieve to have whatever they want to have in the end, regardless of, regardless of, kind of what kind of experiences they would get. It's true that 30% of the um, webs in out there in this world has been powered by monolithic because it simply works. But my question is that, do you think all these content editors and the developers, do you think they have like the nice experience without any stresses at all? That's something I still wonder about it. And this is my final question to you. I want you to think about which experience you want to have as developers and also which experience do you want to give to your content editors? Do you want to be happy together, like with everyone in your team and with your customers? Or do you want to be depressed all? Thank you so much. That will be all from my side. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Muchas gracias. <laughs>